Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Tracker Season 1, Episode 7. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we begin the episode getting our introduction to Sun, uh, who is in a back alley and is defending herself when some people come up and grab her. But it turns out this case is actually brought to culture by... Bobby, because Sun is actually someone he knows. Really quickly, before we go any further, the moment I saw uh, Sun on screen, I was like, oh, I lost my mind, because I was like, that's super dope, because the actress who plays Sun, her name is Diane, I'm, I don't know if it's Duan or Doan, her last name's spelled D-O-A-N. The thing I probably best know her for is uh, the show Warrior, which is a great show if you've never seen it. She plays kind of like a pseudo-antagonist character named Miley. So it's just it's just kind of interesting. I also know her from Agent to Shield, but I completely forgot that I knew her from Agent to Shield. She's in the final season. I won't spoil what her character is, but uh, yeah. So I was excited to see her, but at the same time, like seeing her pop up, I'm also like, oh, it's just kind of a sad reminder that you know Warrior got canceled. I don't know if there's been any developments on that front still. I haven't looked up in a little while, but it should still be on Max all three seasons. I definitely know all three seasons are also streaming on Netflix too. So go watch the show. It's a great period piece martial arts crime drama it's, it's re well worth your time but either way i thought it was kind of interesting because at first you're kind of like oh like they didn't really clarify bobby and sue's relation i said sue son's relationship i mean he kind of made it clear like no no no, we're friends it's not like that and, uh, you know that's where as far as relationship goes like he they they have a lot of similarities because she is very much about like burner phones and he's like you know because she's not too keen about giving the government too much of her information when you look at their circumstances it's understandable because her and her mom are only here on a visa and it turned out like the reason why their situation got complicated is because she was married to her mom married like an american but he died and when he died, it put them in like from a like a legal limbo situation, and now they're kind of in a tough spot. So all of this is about trying to figure out, okay, what son might have gotten mixed up in? Because at first you're like, right, is this an ice situation? Uh, because they went into the the uh, boxing gym or whatever the gym where like she fights and stuff, and it turns out like, hey, like you know, it is a thing of just like yeah, people don't have like proper paperwork and stuff they just get snatched out of the ring sometimes so now at first it's kind of a concern of hey was it ice that grabbed her and Rini pulling a favor was able to kind of get like an uh someone she knows to kind of look into it for her and luckily well luckily but unluckily one it's a good thing ice didn't grab her because that would have been a whole slew of other issues but the biggest issue now is well if ice didn't grab her who did so and it, and a sad thing too is like obviously the way Sun moves about not wanting the government have too much of her information. Her mom is the same way. I think it's because of their legal status that she's kind of grown weary because it's like, hey, if I ask you for help, you might start digging into our situation, finding out our visa complications. So that's why she didn't want cops involved. That's why Bobby went to Coulter for help. And so Bobby being there, like to say like, hey, Coulter's not a cop. I think he's our best chance to find Sun. And it turns out that they dealt with a lawyer who's supposed to help with their immigration situation. But we ultimately find out he's a he's a scammer. He pretends to be a lawyer. Like he might have studied law, but he hasn't actually been a lawyer for like oh, decades. But he just does it to scam people out of their money. It's like, man, you're a garbage human being. Take advantage of people who are desperate and in very terrible situation. Even as the audacity to lay on be like, hey, I'm not the bad guy. Even though you're the one that hooked uh, son up with the loan sharks that she got mixed up in the same ones you trapped her by saying hey they're like she doesn't she hasn't fully paid off her debt so we need you to like bring her to us so he tricked her and then out made her go into the alleyway thinking like hey this will be about something about uh, her visa and end up setting a trap for her and it's like he's got the audacity to say he's not the bad guy in this situation it's like plus when Coulter was sniffing around what did he do pulled out a revolver from his desk and was ready to like He'll probably say, like, I was just going to threaten you. I wasn't actually going to do anything to hurt you. But it's like, yeah, it kind of shows you're not a great person. It was also nice that this episode brought Bobby and uh, Rini together, which it isn't the first time they've met. 
I wonder how long, I mean, obviously their connection and friendship is, you know, through Coulter, but I wonder how long it is that they've known each other through Coulter. Like, the fact is, I mean, even to the point there's still stuff they don't know. Like, Bobby ends up talking about how he actually knows Coulter at one point in time. It's like, oh yeah, like he got into a super sticky situation with some uh, hacking stuff. He's like, didn't know it was Russians. I didn't know what I was kind of mixed up in. And Coulter's the one that helped him out of that. So it seemed like that was the first time Rini'd ever heard that story. Obviously, Bobby respects Coulter enough to say hey i don't dig into my friends so rini explains some of culture circumstances of like yeah his uh dad died and complicated family situation and it's like yeah that's why culture is kind of the lone wolf he is because bobby wants to go with culture because yeah his son is his friend and like if whatever happened to her i want to be there to kind of help but it's like now nah, like culture's putting you on the sideline because he handles a lot of stuff on his own because he's kind of been on his own for a while we once again post his dad dying we don't know what that really did to his family i mean an element to this story we still have not touched on, which I thought was kind of interesting, is we have not seen or heard from his sister. So I think that's interesting. Obviously, like the, the storyline element of like, yeah, his brother popping up. I'm surprised we haven't had hide nor hair of his sister. So I thought that was kind of interesting. We've met the mom. She was in the first two episodes and she's got her own secrets that we haven't circled back to yet. It's just that conversation about Coulter being as uh Rini puts it like lone wolf is gonna lone wolf you know because it's like right you can't really crack that shell yet because culture is not really too keen like he has too much of a wall up around a lot of people because they didn't even start it with like you know bobby being so impressed by Rini being like oh does anyone say no to you and he's like she's like yeah culture does and it's like yeah that you know the, uh, bobby's like yeah he's kind of in the same boat when it comes to me too because Rini, uh, uh, taking a few steps back, Rini actually is helping out Ma, uh, Miss Mai, son's mom, uh, even though she has, like, very distrust, and it's like, oh, you're, like, because she speak, spoke Vietnamese to her, and it's like, oh, like, you're not, you're not Vietnamese, it's like, well, no, but, like, she, I think she she's an army brat, so she's like, my dad, my parent family moved around, so I think she was there for a good chunk of time, so she, I think, still knows the language, so... But it was kind of nice what she did for it's like oh like I'm gonna help you with your your um, your uh, status to the, in this country. It's like well we don't have any money we spent on a lawyer. It's like no 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 this is gonna be free. Don't even worry about that. I'm gonna do everything possible for you. And I thought that was kind of neat because I think it also helps when it's like you know like your lawyer also like you know it makes you feel a little more at ease when it's like oh when she speaks you know, Vietnamese to you, it, it, it lowers your guard a little bit, especially because it's like, well, you literally, the last lawyer you dealt with screwed you over big time. So it's kind of nice to kind of let your guard down a little bit. And it's also like, I'm not charging you either. I want to, I want to do what's right by you because sadly that situation, like, I mean, especially because it's not like a thing of, oh, they're illegal. It's like, no, they just have a very complicated circumstances. As once again, I, I said it earlier, but Rini's the one that said, Right, they're just in a lull limbo. It's like, right, they're here legally, just the circumstances that let them stay in this country before just kind of dried up and it put them in this weird gray area. But as I was talking about it earlier, Coulter, uh, the whole lone wolf element, he decides to kind of go out on his own to the point that uh, he gets in the back of a vehicle that's He's going to follow them because, like, he found the vehicle that, like, the lone sharks use that they grabbed uh, um, Sun in. And he gets in the back of it to follow them back to wherever they might be hiding her, their boss, and all that. But they dropped off some money, but he ended up leaving his phone in the vehicle so that Bobby can come pick him up and they can track his phone. But even going in there, he ends up going alone and not bringing Bobby makes Bobby once again sit on the sidelines I figured as much the moment like we were hearing noise outside I'm like it's an underground fighting because I'm like you know we haven't seen hiding her hair of sun so far in the episode so it's like she's got to be fighting off her debt and lo and behold that ends up being the case I thought Bobby was going to be in a compromised position when he ended up walking in there because he was like, right, I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines. And the guy's like, yeah, like, son, she's a great fighter, but her fighter, she's going up against her stag. She gets a couple minutes break before she gets back in there. And Bobby called it out being like, yo, this place is disgusting, but, you know, it's not cool. It's not right. And I thought that guy would have been like, yo, what are you, a narc or something? You were undercover coppers? And like, I thought that would have caused an issue. It didn't. But any other story, I feel like that thread could have turned into something of Bobby kind of getting figured out. But I say, yeah, Sun's here to clear her debt. It's like, right, by fighting a couple more matches, she's like, two more weeks, 
I will pay off my debt because if I don't, they're going to kill my mom. It's like these people were never going to let you go. They're always going to move the goalposts because you're too much of a draw. And, you know, that ends up being the ultimate reason why they wanted her is because of that. And I thought it was kind of it. I was like, OK, so who's the big boss behind it? Never crossed my mind because, like, once again, it's 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 your classic th TV thing. I mean, it even came up last episode of, hey, it's going to be someone we've met at least once in the episode. It's not going to be a complete stranger. Don't know why it never even crossed my mind. Hey, it's going to be art. The guy from the boxing ring, he was the one that was kind of like a little dismissive. It makes sense, too, because pretty early on in the episode when Bobby and uh, Coulter were talking to him, he's kind of dismissive. Like, yo, I mean, he's the one that led them down being like, hey, Ice might have grabbed her up. Um, you know, and if that wasn't that, she'll show up soon enough. Yada. Like, he, he was kind of quick to point fingers of everywhere else, and it makes sense. He was trying to protect himself. Do let me know in the comments. I should have looked this up beforehand, but... I think the actor who plays Art is also – I was looking at him. I was like, why does he look familiar? I was like, didn't he play the coach in something? But I'm like, I think Superman and Lois. I think he plays the coach for the football team in Superman and Lois. I looked it up. Yes, it's the same actor. His name is Danny Watley. Wasn't he also in Reginald the Vampire? No. Oh, no. Yes, he was. Abraham. I thought so. Because I thought I remembered, like, when I was looking at his face, I was like, aren't some of these photos from Regina the Vampire? And it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah I completely for I actually completely forgot about that. But yeah. Uh, so that was something else I knew him from and I didn't remember. But I, I knew because he is like in both of those cases, he had facial hair. So without the facial hair, he looked a little different. So I wasn't sure. But I'm like, yeah, I got that right. Funny enough, also, uh, Dake, the fighter that worked with him, like the one that has a chip on his shoulder. Um, that actor's name is Steven... Edit Colo, I'm probably butchering that. Edit Adi Colo, I'm probably butchering that. I'm so sorry. I looked him up, and he's actually a, a football player. Uh, one, I, when you Google, there's a picture of him wearing the steel suit from Superman and Lois. So that's kind of an interesting connection, just Superman Lois wise. But I'm wondering, is that supposed to be like, oh, like when it's not. I guess, like, every time there's a shot of just a suit, that maybe he's the one that's in the suit and not uh, Wooley Parks, the actor who plays, um, you know. So uh, I'm curious if that's what it is. Kind of similar to, like, how Brendan Fraser and Matt Balmer voice, like, uh, Robot Man and Negative Man, respectively, but they're different actors on set who do the actual on screen acting with the bodies and stuff like that's what i'm wondering if it's a similar situation i never knew that if that's the case either way tangents and all that aside i'm sorry but yeah it's uh, it turns out like i said before one of my masses tangents I, I'm, I do apologize but it, for it to be art is actually kind of poetic in a very tragic way because the whole point was like right they don't really tr like son and her mom don't really trust people and this one person is someone you're supposed to be able to trust and rely on your user gym and someone you look at as kind of a friend and even bobby looks at you kind of a friend like hey you're someone that like oh bobby like you know can't wait to see you around here again bobby and it's like yeah you're behind all this you're disgusting you set all this up you want son to be your cash cow of like yeah this is your main business and she draws in a lot of attention, so he doesn't want to let her go. Like Coulter said, like they were never going to let her go. They were always going to move the goalposts. So it's inter interesting too, because if you look, like when Coulter catches him, he's a little teary-eyed. Uh, not Coulter, but um, Art. It almost feels like maybe it's kind of like, oh my, my life is older, over. I got caught. All of this is going to bring me down super hard. It's like, yeah, I mean, you're the one that kind of went off, like had to be an asshole. Like, do something terrible like this and manipulate and, you know, use someone that you look after, you know? So, like I said, just – I mean, but when it's all said and done, Bobby's able to take uh, Son home. Obviously, Art goes down for all his crimes. And luckily, Rini was able to – not only was they able to take down Preen, the, the, the fake lawyer, they were also able to – because there's a law about someone with an immigration status situation. I don't know if immigration status would be the right word in this circumstances. Citizen status is, the, I think, the more appropriate term in this regard for their circumstances. But because, like, you are a victim of a crime, it kind of, I guess, like, gives them leave. I, Rini didn't really go into it. I don't know if it's a thing of because of that, you're permanently a resident here 
or at least gives you a visa permanently or is it just in the confines of relation to the trial until they're able to go through the proper channels to like actually get them I don't, I, I don't, I don't think Rini really went into it too much, but I mean, it all works out in the end regardless, you know, so I did think it was kind of cute when, um, son's mom and Rini wanted to give Bobby and, uh, son a little time alone. Um, especially when like son's mom's like, Oh, Bobby, you need to eat more. You know, my, my daughter likes a strong man. And it's just like, wait, what? It's like, it, it, there are like some feelings there and who knows if they're going to pull the trigger on it or whatever, but it does seem like they are really cute together. You know, it's like, yeah, if you ever need my help with that website or whatever, and it's like, yeah. And like, they were just, I almost halfway expected a kiss to happen, but it didn't. So I'm like, okay, but you know, could be something we see in the future of like, oh yeah, we never, you know, we might not get to see sadly son again, but maybe it's a thing of like, you know, Bobby talks about it like in a, like a line, a single line of doll and be like, oh yeah, me and, um, cause he did say like, oh, let's go, you know, have drinks and talk about the website thing. If you still have me, she's like, yeah, sure. I'd like that. So I, I'd, I'd like to, I mean, for one, any excuse to have Diane Doan or Doan, once again, I hope I, uh, I'm, I'm probably, I don't know how to properly pronounce her last name. Um, but any excuse to have her back, I'm always going to be happy about that. So that'd be pretty dope. But it's interesting, too, because obviously how the episode ends, I can only assume that's the file Coulter got from episode two. He still that's interesting. And I think that speaks volumes. He kept it all this time. Now, I mean, it was still it was in the same Manila. Uh, like colored, like like folder like that stuff. So I think it is the same file from like episode two, because the last time we saw it, he just kind of tossed it aside after looking through it. So I'm like, does it have anything pertinent? But it's a little significant of like his inability to kind of let go of the past, understandably something tragic like that and traumatic, like it stayed with you. It's kind of formulated the walls that you kind of put up around yourself. So it's, it is interesting that he keeps, I'd almost halfway expected him to throw it into the water, which I'm like, Hey, don't do that. That's littering. But I thought that's what he was going to do, especially, but then like when Bobby and Rini showed up, I was like, Oh, you're going to ask them for help. But he didn't, he's just telling Bobby, he's like, nah, we're good. You don't have to worry about payment right now. It's just, I think a lot of it, especially because of the whole, I think it's meant to parallel the whole thing that Rini and Bobby talked about, like him not wanting, you know, the asking for help kind of going lone wolf. But, like, even he recognizes, like, it's a good thing you didn't listen to me, Bobby, because if you didn't, you helped me out of a jam, because who knows how that would have gone if you hadn't been there. So, I think it's just maybe him recognizing the signs of, yeah, I'm, this is, like, I maybe it's the first time he's ever had to really take a look inwards about, right, the walls he keeps up. So, even Bobby's like, yo, it's like, him and Rainey are like, we never really, all three of us are in the same place at once, so, like, let's go. But, we're like, what, what culture? is like, no, 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 I'll, uh. I'll catch you on the flip side of that, which is very interesting because there's a similar parallel to last episode with similar situation to Billy who kind of like put Coulter, like, cause I brought it up last episode of how there was a similarities of like, oh, how she's acting is kind of how Coulter would act because they are kind of cut from the same cloth in that same way. But also the fact is now Coulter's doing that to uh, Bobby and Rini after that was kind of done to him previous episode. It's just, it's interesting. Like I said, I think that just speaks volumes. So it's kind of a sad situation for that to kind of be like Coulter just can't bring himself to kind of let down his guard and just like, oh, let's hang out. It's like he keeps people at a distance. It almost makes you feel like that's why the whole Teddy and Vilma thing works so well for him because it's such a remote like connection. I mean, even his like interactions with Bobby typically end up being very remote based. So it almost feels like this interesting parallel of just like, oh, like when the real world and friends kind of collide, you know, he probably feel just as weird and awkward if like Vilma and like Teddy asked him to stay around for something, you know, so it's just, it's just interesting when you break that down. So like I said, overall, everything ends kind of like a, you know, uh, on a good note. So I'm interested to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good